Hello, hello, and welcome everyone back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val, and I am super excited to be here hosting my friend, Claudia from Print My Soul. Claudia, how are you today? What's up? I'm super good, super excited to be here at Adobe Live and to be here with you, Val. It's been a while streaming together, and I'm super, super excited to uh, join the stream here with you today. Yeah, I'm pumped. It's going to be great hanging out, having fun. Um, I would love for you to introduce yourself and give us the down low on what we're going to be working on today. But first, just a quick reminder to all you folks hanging out in the chat, because I see so many familiar faces. I see Afroja and Carol, Wade Acuff, the one and only. I see Umicorn and Joshua, all of you guys. Christopher, welcome in. Um, if you folks have not already, definitely subscribe to the Adobe Live YouTube channel. Um, and you can also find us on Instagram at Adobe Live if you guys want any cool updates, interesting trailers, and fun creative tidbits uh, pertaining to what we've got going on here at Adobe Live. So definitely check those out. But without further ado, uh, how are you doing, Claudie? How What are we working on today? Why don't you give us a little rundown of you and your project? Absolutely. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Claudia. I'm an Italian designer based in Manchester, UK. And I'm really lucky to be here on Adobe Live and show some amazing workflows. Today is an exciting day. There's been a further release implementation of Generative AI inside Photoshop. This is the power of the brand new Adobe Firefly. And if you know all these big words yet, if you don't know what they mean, well, you're in the right place because I'm going to be here breaking it down and explaining to you how to implement Generative AI and the new tools injected inside Photoshop. So we're going to be creating a composition. I was uh, I, I had a call here from Adobe saying, hey, Claudia, do you want to, want to join this stream? And I was literally using the generative AI for a client project. And I'm going to share it with you. So I'm going to share my real world workflow of how to create very special images tailored for a brand and how do we create them exactly ad hoc for a project using generative AI and Photoshop. But of course, we're going to dive into that also amazing feature that Photoshop has always had. I think it's good to balance this brand new technology, but also core skills. We're going to be talking about levels. We're going to be talking about smart objects. So it's going to be fun. And uh, hopefully a lot of information are going to come through this stream. And of course, feel free to use this time to ask questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm really excited, you know, because these these new features are really super fabulous. Um, but the fact that we get to see really how you work, um, you know, in your in your day to day, like how you you implement this in client work and stuff, I think is also going to be just a really awesome piece of insight. So so what's the first step? How do we dive into this? Amazing. So I actually start from the end. So this is the result that hopefully we're going to uh, create from an original image, which I'm going to bring up in just a second, that it was provided uh, from uh, the client. And this is the original image. So we started from here and we ended up here. That's exactly the same photo. In fact, what have I done? All I have to do is simply hide the layers. And uh, here it is. It actually is there. If I hide all the uh, edited and Gen AI layer, I didn't have to show you the original image because it's still there because all this editing is also non-destructive. That means that the original image still lives inside Photoshop as it was, as I showed you or on the, the actual photo. But before diving in into actual editing, I'll give you a little bit of a run through and a background of what this project is about. So hopefully it makes sense and you will be able to understand how to implement it in your own workflow with your own clients. So what I was hired for was to create a coffee branding, like a coffee um, shop branding. This is more like a co-working cafe, a place that sits outside uh, offices and allows people that are like freelancers or they have self-employed that maybe have to go and work with these big companies, but at the same time, they do not want to be either employed or have a full office to just be able to do the same things like have a coffee, have a work, then go for a meeting, come back. It's like a, a space where everybody can relax while at the same time getting their work done. Now, this stream is not about branding. I'm sure you can find so much more branding and logo design inside the Adobe Live YouTube channel, but this is the final result. So this is how I organize my assets. And once I ended up and I finished um, this branding of this cafe called office, 
I just started to have a meeting and I went and joined my client. And uh, at the stage of the meeting, they were starting to think about location and how to do um, the interior design. Now, with my branding, usually I do give some sort of advices. Of course, the branding, as we know, is not just the logo, but it comprehends all the mood and the atmosphere, of course, the color palette. So I was there with the owner and the interior design company that was hired. Um, to do this project and they were just chatting about it and I overheard a conversation regarding you know the examples of the actual um, building because this building is pretty much similar to what I showed you initially so let me mm -hmm. jump back into Photoshop so is this picture over here that's the one that they had on their phone and they were looking at but then what I realized during this meeting is that the interior designer was really struggling to understand to to show to the client and to you know, create the picture of what the final result would be. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought, hey, we can use Gen AI for this. We can make it happen. We can transform this stock photo or general photo that you found online, and we can transform it into the perfect special picture that will that will be able to communicate to the client what is the final goal. So I worked with the uh, and I liaised with the interior designer. I was like, you know what? We're going to make this together. I'm going to pass you all the brand, but also I'm going to show you how this amazing technology work and how we're going to transform this photo that you find on the internet to the final project so you can pitch it out and sell it to the actual owner. So that was the final result. Now, hopefully we're going to create something similar um, to this. Uh, today, but we're going to go step by step on how to create all these different elements. And as you can see, the structure is the same because that's what we needed. We needed the materials, which is a uh, uh, steel cladding, I believe it's mm -hmm. called. Um, but it's really different uh, of that, which looks like a house in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. And just to give you an idea, um, I was when I was working with the, the designer, let me see if that is the right uh, place to go. Oops, let's see here. So we were looking at this different building and you're like, oh, you haven't found anything similar? Well, really, no. We've been looking so much around. In this case, we were on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. They're all houses and there is really nothing, first of all, in color. Mm -hmm. So a cladded color that they wanted to paint or they wanted to put vinyl on, they wanted to put the logo. Everything looks like houses. There is no shop. It couldn't find the right picture to fit its its purpose and its mm -hmm. project so that's why this interaction came in i was like you know what adobe firefly and photoshop are going to solve our problem and they're actually going to go ahead so it actually worked to be oh. able to communicate the picture that it was in the designer mind and of course you know us as creative we can talk about you know things that we can imagine and i think it's so much easier for us but when you're talking with clients it's really hard to, mm -hmm. you know, let them imagine that this can happen out of a picture like that. Because it was like, uh, what is this? What do this? you mean? What? Yeah, <laughs> like, no, I do not want whatever that is. <laughs> so this is what we're going to be doing. And that's, you know, the, the background story of it. And uh, before we dive in and get started into the actual editing, I'm going to give a little bit of a background into the features, which is, as we said, Adobe Firefly inside Photoshop. Mm -hmm. In particular, Photoshop beta. So before we get started, I want to make sure that everybody knows how to access the beta. I've just done a reel because that was one of the most asked questions every time that I was doing a uh, any sort of content that was based on Gen AI. They were like, Cuddy, why can I get the beta? Why can Where I is it? it? Where is it? <laughs> Please, can I get in? Well, everybody can get in. In fact, it's called public beta because it's available for everybody. And let me show you how you can access it. So all I've done here is simply clicked on my Creative Cloud desktop app. I believe there is also a link. I'm not sure if it's provided in this description of this video, but, uh, you know, I think is um, uh, someone in chat is going to, I'm sure is going to, is going to bring it up, but it's a global, global link that you can just uh, add. Or if you search Adobe Photoshop, you can find it from the web. Mm -hmm. But if you already have a Creative Cloud subscription, the easiest way to go is simply to access your Creative Cloud desktop app. And this is how the home is going to look like. And from here at the top, you're going to have a top tab called apps. That's where all your apps live. And that's where you get all the information about the Adobe Creative Cloud apps. And as you can see here, we have a tab on the left called beta apps. This is what you look in. This is what you have to look for. And once you click on it, you will see that we have 
Photoshop beta. Now, for me, it's already been installed because we're going to crack on and work on this right now. But if mm -hmm. you do not have it installed, you'll find it here and you'll see a little install button and all you have to do is to install, install it. Now, second disclaimer, this is a separate app. It's still Photoshop. Yes, it's still Photoshop, but it's a work in progress version of Photoshop. So in order to avoid any conflict, make sure that you close your normal Photoshop. And as you can mm -hmm. see, the icon is pretty similar. It's almost like, you know, still a work in progress drawing. And uh, if you go to all apps, you will see that still here we have our normal Photoshop. While in the beta, we have the other version of Photoshop called Photoshop beta. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also want to remind you, especially today, given the new drop and the new release, if you want to make sure that you can access all the features that I'm showing you right now. And by the way, the team is working so hard on these technologies. So go and check out that updates tab at the top because there are so many updates coming up. This is the place where you want to go to make sure that you stay really at the top of this technology in order to use this modern workflow. Here, you'll be able to find different updates. As you can see, I've just updated the Illustrator beta and you can have so much fun playing around with these features. Now, very last thing, these are work in progress. Therefore, we might hop and stumble a little bit more. Mm -hmm. They're not stable. That's why they're not full release. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a little bit more patient because things may happen, things may crash, things may not work. But Adobe is there waiting for your feedback and all these mistakes don't do anything more than help the team to build a better app and a better Photoshop. Absolutely. Magic takes time, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Very well said. Okay. So hopefully by now, everybody knows what the beta is, how to get it, and you can launch it and you can start working with me. If you have worked with me before, you know that I absolutely love libraries and I like to show it because just to mm -hmm. say it, if you go ahead here, my libraries, those are the libraries and the long list of never and the libraries that Mine I Mine looks the same. Just everything I've ever made and own creatively is just in that list. <laughs> well, it's amazing because libraries allow you to uh, store Mm -hmm. and organize and share your content. So first of all, you can free your hard drive, especially big picture and stuff like that. You can simply mm -hmm. check it in the bin once it's on the library. Also save is on an Adobe server. And then you can also share it and you can always access it anywhere. And any, you know, for example, if you're traveling, you're taking a, um, and an hour right now and I'm a desktop, if I take my laptop with me, I will be able to access the same assets simply by clicking on the library. Absolutely. And if you're wondering... Yeah, and if you're wondering how do you create a library, simply click on create new library. And then all you have to do is to click and drag and drop any assets you want. But more than that, we're going to dive into details later on. You will be able to also access the Adobe stock um, assets directly in app. So you can keep working, stay focused and creating and also having access to professional um, stock that is there for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I've done now is to um, brought in the image. Another wonderful things of working with the library is that even if, for example, we are in Illustrator, let's actually jump back into Illustrator here. And I'm going to try this. And because we are in beta, so this is also another little icon that shows you that we are in the beta. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen in open up in Photoshop beta, but that is the future. If you're working with a normal Illustrator in Photoshop, that's straight away how it works. If you see now the same image is being replicated, so the updates in the libraries happen throughout your Creative Cloud apps and in real time. So if I now double click on the image, because this is a photo, it will open up inside Photoshop. Let's see if nice. it's the case. Yeah, as I said, it's giving me a little bit of an error because it's trying to open the normal Photoshop. Mm -hmm, if you are beta. out of the beta, that would happen automatically. Maybe we can do a little uh, trial at the end, but every, if you double click on an image, it will open up the edit option in Photoshop. So you will launch automatically Photoshop. If you double click on a vector file, it will launch it automatically, automatically in Adobe Illustrator. So it's also an amazing way to jump and open these doors between apps and really take advantage of inter interoperability between these two apps. Absolutely. So right now, I'm just going to do it here within Photoshop so I know that it doesn't get lost in between the beta and the normal app mm -hmm. and just to show you here so here i have my photoshop app and here i have the photoshop beta two different app photoshop is shut down and photoshop beta is open up to make sure that it works at, it, at, at its best 
And what am I going to do now? Once I created this image, I'm going to start right away with the big news of the day, which is generate expand. This is an application of the generative field that allows us what they call a frictionless workflow. That means that we have less step to achieve the same result. In this case, what I want to do is to provide an image that is ready for a high definition presentation. So an um, 1080 by 1920. And I probably that say that upside down because I'm dyslexic and I do that all the time. It's nice. Same by here. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> so that happens a lot every time we talk <laughs> about numbers. So how do we do that? So Generative Expand is a brand new button that comes in what is called the contextual bar. The contextual bar is a new, new, brand new implementation that you also will find inside the main Photoshop release. So even if you're not using the beta, you will discover this new friend, that contextual bar that allows you to access tool related to that specific uh, project. It's almost like a properties panel mm -hmm. shrunk and they're ready for you at your fingertips. If you use the iPad, um, I know Val, they use Fresco a lot. There are yeah. a lot of buttons and there are a lot of, of this contextual bar that comes into play. Mm -hmm. um, they just make it easier and faster to access the most common used uh, task within the workflow, within the tools that you have selected. Yeah. In fact, now that we press the uh, crop tool, which is here in the toolbar, we have this brand new generative expand that comes up. We also have the ratio so we can crop fixing a ratio. So we can have the original one. In this case, I want the 16 by nine. So 1920 by 1080. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all I have to do is to click and drag in order to expand the image and make sure that uh, I just kind of have the size that I want. So I know that, for example, I want a little bit of space on the right. And then I want to make sure that I extend this building at the end. Now, in the past, with the implementation of the generative field, which creates and generates images and pixels by sourcing it from all the images present inside Adobe Stock, which is inside part of the Adobe um, Creative Cloud package and mm -hmm. uh, um, stock images, what does it do? We will have to select it first in order to indicate the areas that are now missing and that we want to refill. And then we will have to go and click on the generate. Here, we don't have to do that. We just have to set the size that we want for the image. In this case, I'm happy with this proportion and with this size. And all I have to do is to click on generate. And then we're going to allow a little bit of time for this magic to cook. And we are going to be um, finding out what is the best fit in Photoshop mine, in the Photoshop mine, because as you can see, all I've done is just simply clicked generate. Wow. I did not use any prompt. I just said to Photoshop, hey, this mm -hmm. is the image. This is the size that I need. Make it happen. Yeah. Literally like that. And as you can see, I already have uh, this pretty exciting uh, um, way of displaying the image. So it's filled in uh, with a corner. So it um, perhaps perceived the end of the image here as a way of creating a corner. So it actually gave me the idea of having like a movement there mm -hmm. and really taking advantage of this cropped pixel as if it was a corner, which is not really what I need because what I'm looking for and the reason why I extended it is because I really want to get more of that yeah. building to showcase and add perhaps like a window, sh shop window. And then he had another option, which is more towards what I'm looking for. And then we and one more. Perfect. I think that that's really, I'm actually really impressed. Yeah, yeah, me too. This is really During the really live cool. stream, we have a better prompt images. I like it that way. <laughs> I hope when that works stick. out. Yeah, I hope this is going to stick to Max. Um, Adobe Max is coming up. One of my sessions is pretty similar to this session today, of course, with more and more amazing technology coming up. And one of my biggest fears is like, what if I got all this amazing plan? And then when I hit generate, Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be disappointed. Like people can read it in my mind, in my face. I can't hide it very well. But in this case, I think that is done a pretty fantastic. It looks so much better than yeah, the one yeah. that I tried. <laughs> okay, so that's our first step. What if though you're not happy? Because it does happen. Reality is, is that Photoshop here is guessing. Mm -hmm. It's just giving you option of what you want. Do you want a full building? Do you want a building and a half? Do you want the building to like curve? If you're not happy with it, you can go ahead and click generate as many times as you want just to see different different options. So I'm just going to do it one more time just to show you that here. And by the way, 
while these uh, new uh, options come up, I want to highlight that the place where you can find a preview thumbnail of this option is the properties panel. Mm -hmm. So we have this brand new uh, look for the properties panel that is uh, absolutely related to that gen AI field. So the generative field, and that's where you can also prompt once you have a selection. And then you can click the generate button here as well. So you can make everything work from the properties panel. As I say, the contextual toolbar is like a um, summarized version of mm -hmm. the properties panel. And here you have also a preview of all the yeah. different um, uh, version that has generated. You can also now, see the prompts yeah. in there, which I find really helpful. If you are generating stuff and you find that maybe your phrasing now is not giving you exactly what you're looking for, I like to go back and look at my previous prompts from ones that I preferred so I can keep track of the language I'm using, which is really helpful. Absolutely. I think I think that's really, really amazing. Um, and something else that I would invite you to do, if there is something like that, which are like, ooh, yuck, what is this? <laughs> um, Adobe and the team at Firefly, they absolutely are eager to have your feedback because stuff that doesn't work is not good for anyone. And they're working so hard to make it work uh, work good for you. Mm -hmm. So feel free to give that per result or that, you know, thumbs down. If it's something that concerns you even more, you can even report the results. So make sure to use these. They're really easy, like thumbs up or thumb down to just, you know, flag the result and be like, hey, this is not matching what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And perhaps I, I find myself always giving the thumbs down rather than thumbs up. <laughs> do you give the thumbs up sometimes? Perhaps we should. I, I feel like I could do it more, but you, it's just like that's the way that's intuitive to do it because when it works, it works and you start working, you continue on. But when it doesn't work, you want to be like, no. <laughs> well, let's give it a good thumbs up now. Yes, that's let's a do really that. good result. And if you want, for example, if you just if you have just a couple of different um, images that you're happy with, so you can get rid of the other one. You just simply go ahead and click on the lead and you just get rid of the one, hopefully not the one that I need. Mm -hmm. um, just to, you know, make it a little bit more easier for you to look. I'm going to stack back the property panel here. Okay, so hopefully you get the general idea of how this work. Now, let me show you another way. So this was what we just used here was generative expand brand new come out today into mm -hmm. the public beta. You don't have to do any selection. All you have to do is to resize using the crop tool. And once you generate the areas that are outside your image uh, border, you automatically Photoshop is going to understand that those are the areas that is going to fill and replace using that generative fill. Now, mm -hmm. you could perhaps also use a prompt in there, but we're going to use that in, in a second stage. So. How do you use generative fill outside of this brand new experience of the generative expand? Now, first thing you want to do is choose any, and I say any, meaning the marquee tool, the lasso tool, any of the selection tool that you have available here inside your toolbar. So I tend to use the marquee tool at all a lot, uh, but I've seen many demos with uh, the lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool. Mm -hmm. Now, Gen, Gen AI and Adobe Firefly, they're really forgiving. So you do not have to be detailed. Although bear in mind that what is inside the selection is what Adobe Firefly and Gen AI is going to look at. So if, for example, I go here and I start to include the edge of the building. So let's say here that I want to create another build. Maybe let's let's do the road first, because at the moment we still have this suspended house. We have to mm -hmm. transform it into a coffee that is sitting outside an office. Mm -hmm. This is what the business owner wants to see. That's what he wants. And that's what we're going to give him real quick. We're going to just make it happen with these tools. Now, bear in mind what you're going to uh, select, because if I end up selecting outside of the bricks and I do not include the bricks, we're going to retain the bricks yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. So it's very forgiving, meaning you don't have to be very specific and very detailed here. For example, if I'm selecting the three, but at the same time, you have to be mindful of what you are inserting inside the selection. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the lasso tool. That's perhaps a little bit a little bit too high as a point. I'm just going to um, come here and just drag a little line. I'm going to pretend that this is a road over here. And I'm just going to create the selection. And now we have these uh, uh, reach tool tips, which already let us know how does it work. So we can go ahead here and simply click on generative fill. And I'm going to go ahead and um, 
move the toolbar, the contextual toolbar over here. By the way, at the beginning, I have to be completely frank and honest with you. I wasn't sure about this contextual toolbar because it was like moving all over the place every time mm -hmm. you're making a selection. I was like, I'm already dyslexic. I get distracted really often and where are these things going? But mm -hmm. then <laughs> I learned that you can actually pin it in a position. So we're going to put it here against the sky where it's nice and contrast. We can have a look at it and I'm going to pin it there and it's not going to go anywhere anymore, making our nice. life easier. And here um, we're just going to go ahead and maybe just write path. Now, I've seen many people using Firefly and using Gen AI, and I see these wonderful, lush, magical words in order to generate really ecstatic results. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do when I'm creating like a fantasy composite. But when I'm editing pictures and I need something in Photoshop or something like, again, for a project, which is like, you know, I need a path, I need a road, I need a building. Mm -hmm. I just use simple words. And I think that the simple your prompt it is the more spot on the results are nice okay good to know i could i can test that out for myself yeah these are looking you know you know i could you have exactly gone and, and, and write like oh grass with a path and with a little bit of dirt and these mm -hmm. and that and it would have gone crazy it's like uh where because you have to think that once you start to input all these details it's gonna have to place it in your selection yeah so once you have like just a word it's like oh this is a path so it's mm -hmm. going to look at all the path and it's going to be like, oh, how can a path sit in this selection? Yeah, I, I agree 100% mm -hmm. because when we think in our heads, like I, like you said, I want a path with grass and then some dirt and some bricks or whatever. Um, it does not know how much value you place on one element over the other. So it's going to throw all that stuff in there. But if you keep it simple, um, then you will probably get a very natural looking uh, addition. And then something else that I do is that I keep adding to the selection. So um, it's like a patch over a patch over a patch over a patch. And I'm actually going to show you some details here. So look what mm -hmm. I've done first. I first done like a path and then I put a road. Mm -hmm. um, and just so you can see that how wonderful and how majestic is the result over here. So I've got plenty of options that I can mm -hmm. choose. I'm probably going to stick with this one. Now, something else that I want to highlight. So we had a look at um, how to use the contextual bar. We had a look at how the properties panel does changes with this brand new uh, view of the thumbnails of the variation. Something else that is new in um, and, and related to these new tools is the layers panel. Mm -hmm. So the layers panel we know is the place where we have each single object. The pixels are there uh, that define each single object that lives inside our canvas inside Photoshop. But look what happened here. Every time that we started to create something using the generative field and generative AI, Photoshop has made automatically a non-destructive generative layer. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have this first generative layer. I'm going to go ahead and hide the first one. And then this is the second one over here. So as you can see, the reason why uh, they say that is less friction in using the generative expand is that look at this selection. I would have to make this selection, you know, use the marquee tool, select one, and then hold shift and select the selection manually. Well, by simply extending the canvas, is done the selection on its own. And what I find interesting in this, you know, sort of back work and, and having a look at how it works is like, look at the way that Photoshop has made the selection itself. If I would have done it by myself, I would have simply created a rectangle here and a rectangle here on the on both sides. But let's have a moment to reflect on how Photoshop itself has made this selection using uh, um the generative expand because this selection was automatically made by Photoshop once we use the crop tool. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, you know, it tells a lot of what sort of element they or it it requires uh, in order to uh, create a viable solution here. So that's super interesting. And now once we go ahead and implement the second layer, something else that we want to look at is that is literally adding area and replacing also the area around so it's not just like patching so if i go ahead and, and move this around you perhaps can have a look so it actually replaced the bottom of the building as well so it's not only adding the path itself but it's actually adding the path plus the end of the building that matches the path and keeping the perspective of the building itself which to me 
is one of the most mind blowing and amazing way of this uh, of how this feature works. I agree. I agree 100%. Okay. <laughs> yeah, pr yeah, perspective is like, you know, I struggle and now this thing is doing it on its own. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we see how the layers panel works. If you want to be super neat, perhaps here I will have like background extended and then here I will have path. I'm not if, I'm not sure if I'm satisfied with the path. Now the beautiful things of this is that the selection is there. And I can anytime either use uh, the generative layer or simply here the uh, bar um, in order to uh, the contextual toolbar in order to edit the specific selection. So yeah, is edit you can hide it. You can simply hide it using the eye icon to make it disappear. The original image is still there, but you can also edit it, and you still have the variation that you have used there. So it's still mm -hmm. safe to experiment, and I love that because you don't have to be afraid to experiment. This is like the place to experiment. Yeah, 100%. So on my right sidewalk, as I said, I did forget the, the list that, <laughs> that I used initially. <laughs> so maybe it was a sidewalk because I love this path, but we need to bear in mind that we're trying to help the interior designer to give um, them, you know, the honor of the cafe, a, a, a realistic location mm -hmm. for this building that is creating for him. Um, here it is. That's probably something that I'm more satisfied with because it's still a commercial area. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not not necessarily a field. So any of this will work for me. I think that's that's probably like nice. It looks like a parking spot, so we can just park our car, get out of the office, get in the coffee, grab, um, um, you know, maybe go to our office, come back and work in this office. So this is starting to make sense. And that's what we want. We wanted to think about uh, what we need to create, type it, boom, and transform it in pixels. That's the beauty of Adobe Firefly. Yeah, and as so, you said, it is giving that perspective. It is making everything look super cohesive, oh, yeah. which is just exciting to watch come together. And again, if you're working um, with another designer here or with, uh, in this case, with uh, the interior designer as I were working, I'm not going to go into details here too much, but you have the option to share this mm -hmm. document and share for review. So mm -hmm. you'll actually be able to have these different options, um, either with the path or with the sidewalk. So you, you can let your colleagues and your team uh, decide and help you to move toward a decision that works for the client and for the pitch. And he won the job, by the way. He won the <laughs> job with this, with this pitch. So uh, it works. Yes. And now we're going to move forward here and we're going to create buildings. So um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use another selection tool, which is the marquee tool. And I'm going to go ahead and click and drag in order to create a building over here. Again, be mindful of your selection. And I'm just going to do a little bit of trial and error to see the difference. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and write modern office. Now, as you can see, I left some space in between um, the actual cafe structure and the office structure uh, because I want them to be separate. But we're going to also um, see what happens there. So modern office, probably should have write building. See, that's why I write simple things office building I'm gonna leave the modern out see what happens there i'm not sure it's, what that was it's definitely made me take a closer look at what i say versus what i mean you know yes. like what i what i mean by what i've said and then this the very specifics of you know what i actually said <laughs> Yes, because, you know, uh, and oh, and by the way, there is another news, which I haven't shot it out yet. You can use different languages because that's, that was mm -hmm. exactly what I was going to say. Like, usually I have to go on Google Translate because my ideas, as much as I've been working for like the longest time in English now, mm -hmm. and the majority of my vocabs are in English in technical terms and in presenting, my ideas are in Italian. Mm -hmm. So when I'm thinking about something, I'm like, oh. Na, 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 na. in Italian I'm like oh great now I'm gonna have to go on Google Translate and translate it because when I think I can't translate for some mm -hmm. some reason but now we have this wonderful implementation of being able to use I don't know how many thousands languages well I don't know if you know the details about um, the number I don't know the exact number but it is quite a lot and I saw you probably caught the video which many of you can see as well of showing off all of the different um, ways that you can communicate uh, with the generative AI within uh, Photoshop now. And I was totally blown away and I was so excited. So, so excited. 
Yeah, because the whole idea is to be able to describe what you want. And there are mm -hmm. so many non-English speakers that were cut out or they mm -hmm. had to like go and translate and they probably get lost in translation with it. So here I'm keeping generating different options of offices. And I tend to like do quite a lot because I'm not super happy uh, of the result. But before moving forward, I'm just going to go ahead and hide this layer by clicking on the eye icon. And I'm just going to do, as I said before, like a different selection. Oops, sorry. What's going on here? Um, create a different selection, just including the side of the building gotcha. to see what happens. Because as I said, it's very forgiving. You can use a variety. Oops, here, let me go. All right, office. Next step, please, Adobe people, can I just think it? And then it appears yeah. without having to type it. Just beam it into Photoshop with your Although mind. I'll be afraid of the um, things that would appear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably have like uh, gummy monsters all over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so office building or a lot of kitties and cats and dogs. Office. That would be me. It would be Star Wars and cats. And that's it. No one would ever get a straight project out of me. It would just be chaos. <laughs> hey, we need, we need a composite with Star Wars and cats. Have you done it so far? I have actually, I have huh. done a composite with Star Wars and Cats, but I will never say no to making more. So <laughs> if this is a formal request, request yes, it granted. Is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> All right, then. Okay, so look what happens here. I've now included um, the building and we have a much smoother transition between the building and the offices. Nice. And if you remember well, this is what I was highlighting when I was saying, hey, let's take in consideration these specific selection that Photoshop has made itself when it was working on my initial image. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it didn't just select the white area, but it took quite a good chunk of pixels from the image. So basically saying, hey, I need some info to make sure that this is smoothly integrated inside the actual, the actual photo. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to give you this little bit of a insight on how it looks. See, like it just looks a little bit disconnected because mm -hmm. the selection would disconnect it. Well, here it looks much, much more seamless. Yeah. So I can, can comfortably delete this layer. Let's make sure that I've deleted the right layer here. Yep, here it is. And now I have my buildings. You already added a tree. And we have also perhaps different way of displaying the building. So as you can see here, it's actually modified um, the building. Any of this works fine for me. I'm probably probably quite like this one. That's got a little bit more of uh, stuff going on in the background. Yeah. And we have the tree. We have the reflection of the tree. That I'm just gonna do something to show it off, but we don't need it. I love the pond. The pond demo. Everybody yes. that does a pond. Oh demos. my goodness! It is so much fun. Yes, please. We don't also... need a demo. We are not gonna put a demo. We're not gonna put a pond in front of your cafe door. Do not worry. Disclaimer. <laughs> Sometimes that's what you should do, you know, when using generative fill, just as like a palette cleanser, you know, just you do X, Y, and Z, take a break, make a pond, go back to work, you know. Um, we do have some uh, some comments in the chat. Wade has actually posted the Adobe blog link uh, for the generative expand workflow and global language support for Firefly powered features, which is awesome. Oh, so definitely check that out Thank if you, you have not already. Um, and then General Kenobi in the chat. Hello there um we were discussing about like just beaming our thoughts directly into photoshop and general kenobi says your thoughts betray you <laughs> like yes everyone <laughs> will only know that claudia and i just like dogs and cats yes. and that's it <laughs> and gummy bears for me yes and gummy bears. Reason, I'm, I'm, I'm like oh, here we go so look at that that was just again disclaimer if the honor of this coffee shop so is cool. perhaps what we weren't gonna put mm -hmm. upon this is just to show and showcase how amazing it is and by the way look at that it's not only done a pond it's almost done it as like a like a uh, again i don't know what the word in english like well, a it has like the reflection urban, and everything like an urban fountain yeah. sort of like thing so it, it made it in contest in context mm -hmm. of, of what the location actually is. But we have the location of the bit, we have the reflection of the building. Let me just zoom it in just to make sure that everybody can see how dope it is. this is. So we have the reflection of our building, the reflection of the sidewalk, the reflection of the grass, the tree, everything is there, which is pretty amazing. I cannot mm -hmm. not show the pond reflection, but we can get rid of it and everything goes back to normal because it's not destructive. And uh, we can also go back to the original image anytime that we want. If we want to feel like excited of how far uh, have we gone with this. So there is so much more to share. I think I hope that we're still good with time. Do we have another hour or so? 
Um, we have, let me check. We have um, just a, a little over 45 minutes. So we're, we're, we're heading towards the halfway mark here. So we've got Perfect. plenty of time. Perfect. Because I want to dig in in some to like, you know, Photoshop good stuff like levels and smart objects because it's not all about Adobe Firefly. We are extremely excited about Adobe Firefly. Game changer. We're just looking at this and how you can implement it in your workflow. Mm -hmm. Elevate your pitch. Really help to transform your idea and your vision into Pixel and communicate with your team and with your clients. This is yeah. what I'm here to, to show you today. And how it uh, fits but, in with your, you know, your current stuff. It's great. Absolutely. But then there is also, you know, the normal Photoshop tools, which are also pretty exciting and allow us to do really cool things. We're going to, uh, one thing that I'm really excited to show you is how to create this window effect with the reflection and how to place the brand there. So there is a lot to do. Okay. So let's see something that I found challenging and I'm just going to try to add again, just because, you know, maybe it'll be interesting to have your feedback file. Here's someone from the chat mm -hmm. was the bikes. Now I wanted to bring the bikes in because again, the whole idea is to use Firefly to create an image that will paint in the mind of my team or the client, the vibe and the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And this is a cafe for like smart, uh, you know, um, and tech people that are like not necessarily using a car so the majority mm -hmm. of this audience and to connect with the audience the audience use a bike to go to work and to go mm -hmm. to the office and they just use that as their co-working space so a majority of these people do use bikes so i want to make sure that this place looks is bike friendly so you can come with your bike here yeah. and the best way of doing so is just by placing some bike now I could go into adobe stock find a bike and try to like make it work make sure that it's got the same color and luminosity and then I'm gonna have to trace it and mask it and blah 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 and then a day is gone just for a bike yeah. or we can go ahead and click and select the marquee tool here and now I wish I did write down what I wrote because it took me a while to get the bike at the beginning I was doing like bike parking mm -hmm. and then I don't know what else I tried but then again I just resorted to write Bicycle, which I'm gonna miss. How do you spell bicycle? Um, bicycle. I am I am so not the person to ask. I just had <laughs> this issue with Ted where we were both like, how do we spell the stuff? We know what we want. Um B I C Y C L E. I think so. Well that that's what I put, I think. B I C Y C L E. Yes. I don't think I don't know. It, it looks we know what is a bicycle. In my head, it looks like it. that's how it's spelled. But there we go. We got one. Okay. Perfect. So at the end, I was trying to, again, I was trying to like write bicycle, like parking or mm -hmm. um, there, there is a specific name. I actually like research it on the internet of like, like what I wanted. Like stand or something? Yes, something like that. And it was just really, really hard. And that brings me back to my suggestion that unless you really need it, just go simple. Mm -hmm. And even bike, for some reason, was having some ish that, that they, were, they just looked really weird. Mm -hmm. um, but here we have just... Even if we, uh, as you can see, even if I put bicycles, it still come back with one mm -hmm. bicycle. So let's see um, if I write like many bicycles. I'm not you sure might also be able work. to get a little more specific. Like if this doesn't do what you're looking for, you could say like three bicycles in a row or okay. like sitting let's in a row, that. maybe get like a few of them, almost like they're aligned like you would see could could work and sometimes i don't know if it ever happened to you but oh here we go Yay! oh that's great we got the bicycles we got, they're a bit weirdly weirdly swishing this this side here but um can be pretty forgiving sometimes i don't know if it ever happened to you but i had to delete the selection and make a selection mm -hmm. because when it was prompting the same thing on the same selection it would just kind of like reading the space and it's like this is just a space for one bike you know yeah I mean? yeah yeah <laughs> so I, like... I have experienced that before i think too with that like just like you have to be experimental with the prompts that you're using you also have to kind of open your mind to how your selection can be interpreted right because i will select something i think i was trying to add spaceships in and i was like add spaceships and i selected the sky and it gave me one spaceship that took up the whole sky and i was like <laughs> exactly. i want a fleet <laughs> I want an <Yeah>. armada. <laughs> so what did you say before? A row of three bicycles? Yeah, yeah. Let's see what that comes up to. 
uh, a row of three parked happen. bicycles. But a row of three bicycles, would, I just don't know if they're going to, like, um, li line it up nose to end or if they'll be parked, like, sitting next to each other. Like, because and that kind of plays into the what we mean versus what we say yeah. um, is that we'll see how it interprets it. Let's see. Again, I just think is reading this. Oh, I kind of like this one. That's cool. I kind of, I don't know. Wait, wait, in proportion, what do you think? Probably the, the white one or the black? Honestly, the black one with several, um, it does yeah. look to me like, you know, several people have parked there to go yeah. in and, and have lunch or do a, a team meeting with lunch or something. Um, and it reads the most natural to me as far as like at a glance what I'm looking at and conveying that concept. And also, again, what I was going to say, because these here, I'm not looking to create like a specific composite. I still have some freedom in the mm -hmm. way that I'm going to create stuff. What I tend to do when there are like things like, because all these bikes are fine. The only one that is a bit wonky, Willy Wonka, is this one here. Mm -hmm. This is like this little tire that looks bent. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the solution is, why don't we place a tree in front of it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is what i literally do every time that like something doesn't work well let's put something on top of it because it's gonna patch put a it bush. just fine that's where the shrubbery goes that's where that's the shrubberies and the the flower plants go <laughs> and i've done that so many times and it just hides everything that doesn't doesn't look spot on mm -hmm. so let's put these three but again this is just to give an idea so i'm sure that in this case the owner is not looking at that but so that's not a tree that's a man that's <laughs> that's concerning. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna flag these up. Okay, <laughs> and just yeah, just this is this is one of those situations like what you were discussing earlier, where you don't exactly get what you're looking for. It's not related, so you can flag it. Just give um, Adobe a little bit of feedback so that they can yeah. improve, and then the next so time somebody you know goes to add a tree, maybe they don't get a one-legged man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so let's go ahead. I brought threes. It's really weird because it never happened before. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's really important to flag when this stuff happened. Okay, so it just kind of like, okay, that still works. It just put like the tree behind for some mm -hmm. reason. I got a different option of the tree. And then we got the man again. Okay, let's just put the tree behind. So I kind of like this option here because it almost created like a curve and a corner, which is perfect. So mm -hmm. he's hiding the, the, the little wheel and he's just place and it's like created a perfect parking spot that i wanted on the side so now mm -hmm. we have the sidewalk free for our for our shop yeah um another big task here will be to get rid of this wall and make sure that we do have just like a plain um a plain rest of the building because i really do not need this wall because i'm using that as a window uh and that's what the designer wants you just want to mm -hmm. give like an inside i was going to look so in this case here, I'm going to be using that polygonal lasso tool. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I have a little bit of that building. Remember the original selection, the Photoshop as advised. And probably I'm just going to go ahead and like add a little bit of the sidewalk as well to give parameter of what I want to merge it into. Mm -hmm. And again, in this case, the best way to do it, just simply to leave it blank mm -hmm. and click on generate. Uh, because in this case, we are not adding any prompt to direct the image generation. We are just letting the pixels mm -hmm. speak um, to the Gen AI. And here it is. I think Ooh. done a fantastic job already. Yeah. We've got some stairs. We've got probably this is one of the best one here. Mm -hmm. Again, there is a little bit of stuff going on here, but we're going to put a tree. So. Yes, <laughs> put a tree. Not a man, <laughs> like, but a tree. Yeah. Let's, let's <laughs> yeah. see if it works here. Yeah, yeah I think weird. that's really great. And I, I think that it's really important, especially if there are folks in the chat who are kind of just getting into experimenting with these tools. It's sometimes, um, even if you know exactly what you want to be there, leaving it blank might be the best um, the best option as far as um, removing something. Ooh, that looks really nice. That, that's cute. Those, it just matches yeah, those the look side. Cool. Um, but yeah, it leaving it blank could be the best option because, and like you said, specifically selecting a little bit around those edges so that it can see what you're trying to blend um, this fill into um, can give it a little more context so it's more accurate to perhaps what you desire, um, I think is great advice. Yeah, I was tempted to do that with the wheel, but what it created here with that corner, it just mm -hmm. gave me the perfect like bike um spots there and this is what i'm doing here as well like I had, there was a little bit of an issue with um this side of the building there was something there 
mm-hmm. and I could have masked it. I could have used the stamp clone. I could have done so many things that require multiple steps, but I just mm-hmm. select it, give it like a empty prompt and it just kind of like merged that there. Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, I've showed you now a few ways of how to use that gen AI inside Adobe Photoshop. And I'm just going to like pause it there. Um, and then we're going to take it back in just a second. Cause as I said, I want to focus on also the, our lovely, lovely Photoshop. We love Photoshop. And uh, there are so many other tools that are also exciting to use inside Photoshop. Or maybe mm-hmm. like one more thing. Let, let's start one more with, um, uh, with the actual prompt. So we're going to put a window here. So I'm just going to use these. And again, I'm not an architect. I'm not an interior designer. So I'm sure that for some whatever reason, this size of the window is going to be not the right size that someone will ever use for a cafe window. (laughs) But in my imagination, that's how it looks like. And that's how it's going to be. So I'm going to go ahead here and write. um, And what can we write here? Like shop display window? Yeah, or like... um... You could even do cafe interior. I don't okay, know we'll if that, that will, you know, that could that could work too. But um, shop display window, I think, could be cool as well. So because at you the might moment, see, you know, for my stuff. conservative, conservative, uh, I just put like display window and just kind of look like more like an advertising thing. Mm. And also it's making it so small. Like it's really. Yeah. Maybe so let's go ahead select and use a larger size. It was quite large, wasn't it? I thought that it was. Well, we can go back. So let's let's remove this and let's start again. So let's make it this big. Nice. What a big window. <laughs> okay, so let's probably use display. What do you say, shop? Yeah, we could do um, cafe interior because that might really give it to like generate some cafe esque. <laughs> sorts of things that could work um also if anybody in the chat has any ideas for things we can use definitely get involved um let us know if you have any uh ideas for us and things you feel might um really get that um that across it looks like it's adding like things on top of it yeah um, i think I- like we're jumping the wind the fact that we want to like be on the window. window so i'm just gonna do like shop display window and then maybe, let me see if I can spell. I think someone in the chat says, I can't spell, I can't type today. Well, I can't type and I can't spell. So <laughs> welcome to my world. I, I can't, I can't. I feel like if I am sitting in my office by myself, I can do a very good job. But as soon as I turn my camera on for a stream, it's like I don't know how to write anything. <laughs> well, that's the anxiety of having to spell in front of everybody and making yeah. sure that everybody knows that you can't spell. Yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, I'm quite satisfied with this one. So this one was shop display window, which is quite cool. And I'm just going to click another generate to see if it gives me more option. I think Mm -hmm. the one that I've used in my original um, transformation that actually was used for the final composition um, at like a border, like a a nice like wooden border. But Mm -hmm. here it is. Nice. Yay, calling for it. So that could be an option. But again, you can click generate as many times as you want. I absolutely love that because sometimes I also find that by clicking generate more times, I just get added ideas Mm -hmm. that I wasn't like even thinking myself and then can just prompt even more um, like of your design. Oh, I love this one. We got it. Yeah, that one looks really great. Got it. That's awesome. That's absolutely fine. Okay, so. Now, what's happening here is that I have all these layers that are not named. So I'm just going to do my quick duty of like name them real quick. So we have the window here. Um, We have the, maybe we can merge these two, group these two, because these two were the side of the building. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to group them here. Yep, here they are. So that's side building. And I strongly recommend you to like, yeah, so that's trees. Um, layer organization can sometimes really turn around and bite you if you're working on a big project and I don't know about you Claudie but sometimes I end up with files that have like a couple hundred layers in them just doing all kinds of stuff especially if you have groups and And iterations where is it I you know what I do I press v on my keyboard to access my my move select tool and then just like (laughs) click and just help that it'll take me so doing this that claudia is doing as you go or 
taking a break every certain amount of time and in increments to do a little organization will help you immensely during your process. That's that's what I usually do. I just kind of like um, take a break and do it here and there. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this file because it looks like it's not finding the original because we opened, by the way, the reason why I wasn't finding it, I was like, why is not saving it? We started with a PNG from mm -hmm. remember it was this image that we launched from the uh, libraries yeah so in order to save it i should have to flatten everything mm -hmm. and rasterize everything and then i could have saved it again because otherwise we're dry, we are trying to squash a heavily hated uh, edited uh, photoshop file with gen ai fills layers inside mm -hmm. a png and it's like eh, like that yeah. is not happening <laughs> So we want to keep it into um, a Photoshop file. So we've done a quick save and edit um, in order to keep going and make sure that we save the file. That's another important thing to do. So let's go ahead here and group all these editing layers to show a little bit of before and after for those of you that have just joined right now. Uh, I think we've done like quite a lot of work already, isn't it? Imagine yeah. how long it would have taken to like manually edit it. And that's that's really the big the big thing here. And one of the things that you said earlier, I thought was really important because it's something that's really resonated with me throughout exploring these tools. And that is, you know, you said earlier, well, we could spend a day finding, you know, that perfect image of a bike, or we could add one in um, for the concept that is positioned the way that we need. And I feel like it does remove a lot of that stress of like trying to find the perfect image and then edit that image, you know, to match the environment and all that kind of stuff where you can sit here for, we've been working for um, less than an hour and you've, you've come to this point where you can see the integrity of the initial concept building is there, but it has been elaborated and kind of built upon in such a way that it's transformed it completely for the better, which is just really exciting. Yeah. And not only for the better, to match the vision that we're <laughs> going to sell to our client, which is mm -hmm. the point you can just transform your vision into pixels and communicate it, use it to communicate with your team and with your clients, which I really hope that, you know, you're going to use and I mean, you'll see how amazing useful it is. In the meantime, I was just trying to do a door, but my selection was so small. It's like, this is the tiniest door that a cafe has ever been. <laughs> I did really only... like, ooh, that one actually looks, um, I feel like it looks, it looks really cool, but the, you, you did have one that was like, almost like it was blended in with like the, with the same material. Um, yeah, because it was a cool. glass door. Yeah. It, it was just too small. Like you have to enter like sideways. <laughs> yeah. Just like, this is the, you have to crab walk in. That's the, that's the theme. Um, okay. It looks like we've got uh, some new folks coming in um, and just to kind of check in with you folks in chat, uh, because I do, do see, uh, uh, Tarcisio, Tarcisio. I hope I'm not Tarcisio. ruining. I think it's Italian. Tarcisio, Tarcisio. Okay, Tarcisio. Thank you. That's my 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 Italian lesson for the day. <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome in. Thank you so much for joining us here on Adobe Live. I also see um, Christian is in the chat. Um, I think Afroja is taking off, but Afroja, it was wonderful, wonderful to see you um, today. So thank you. Um, I know that Emma. Uh, jumped in earlier and um, I think we had another uh, another friend pop in earlier but thank you guys so much for joining us I'm so glad we've got a lot of love in the chat for your process here um, Claudie just so you know people very excited Yay. about what's going on um, and also uh, last little reminder little tidbit um, if you have not uh, given us a subscribe over on the YouTube channel Adobe Live on YouTube definitely uh, do that because that is where you can see all of the awesome upcoming stuff that we've got going on you can also follow us on on Adobe Live on Instagram. Um, and if you would like to nominate yourself or another creative for a future guest slot so they can come and hang out like Claudia and I are doing today, um, you can check out um, uh, the info tabs and, um, and things above the chat for that information. Um, all right, but let's let's kind of dive back into what you're doing because I see you are generating. Yes, uh, I just I'm just stairs. taking this time to like, yeah, that's another thing. I always like to add stairs, and then like I usually put like a sleeping cat. I'm not super excited about the example that I'm that I'm finding here. I always have to remember and that we have to take like a larger portion of pixels 
rather than the one. So my initial one, like it, it would just like where exactly I wanted the steps, but there are sides of the steps. They're actually going to have to be merged into what the actual original image is. Mm-hmm. So remember always to make a larger selection. Yeah. I think that those are like perhaps the best for now. We can come back again. You can click generate for ages. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Mm-hmm. Because as I said, I just wanted to jump into a little bit more like of standard Photoshop stuff. Yeah. So how do we transform the, um, the window? Now, Val, that's exactly where I was going to go. Like, I-, I love that. That's that's the intuitive part where you say, you know, cafe interiors. Like now, how do we chuck a cafe interiors in there? Because it's going to be a little bit hard. But that's why we have and we're working in Photoshop and not just in Firefly. Because Photoshop comes with another amazing set of tools they will allow really to take this already composition that we created thanks to the generative ai uh, tools into a new dimension so how do we create the window there Mm -hmm. well the first step here will be to go back to our crop tool in this case we're going to be using our perspective crop tool and what i'm going to do is to create um oh just say here you cannot use blah blah blah. it doesn't like generative layers so what i'm going to do here real quick i'm going to go ahead and save my file first of all and then I'm going to go ahead and select all my layers and I'm going to group them. Oops. And then I'm going to press so control G to group, control E to rasterize. So we literally destroyed and lost everything. But don't mm-hmm. worry, this is just temporary. We're going to go back into it in just a second. But as you can see now, we are able uh, to use this tool. And what I'm doing here, I'm just literally creating a crop of the mm-hmm. pixels that make the window just like that. And by the way, this is an amazing way of creating mockups as well. So bear this in mind because you can use these over and over again. So this is wow. the actual size of the stretched window. Mm-hmm. And what I'm going to do here, press control A to select all the pixel and control C to copy the pixel. So I use the perspective tool to create a prospect as a selection of the pixel inside the window. And then it, up, it, open up, uh, it opens up into um, just the real flattened uh, image and then control A to select all the pixel that uh, create the window and then control C to copy them. So now we have loaded this pixel mm-hmm. and now control Z, control Z, control Z after we uh, delete the pixels there. Sorry, we deselect, not delete the pixels. So now everything goes back. Now, before you paste them, remember, we still have to bring all our layers back. Here it is. So control Z, control Z. We have everything there. We nice. flattened just to use the, um, the tool there. And now control V, we still have those pixels there. Make sure that we place it at the very top. So this is the actual window that we have over there. And what I'm going to do now is to simply distort it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and use, I'm just going to zoom in. I always work like so zoomed out when I'm live. <laughs> I work much more zoomed in when I'm working in real life. So control mm-hmm. T to transform your pixels and then use that control while you click and drag uh, in order to distort. So here I'm actually distorting the image and I'm just mm-hmm. kind of placing uh, back the pixels where they are. And actually... I forgot something. Before doing that, we have to right click and transform this layer into a smart object. This is a very important step because the smart object is not going to actually preserve these pixels right here. So you can see it is this extended version of our crop. And now that we created like we preserved and we saved those pixels. Now we can go back and do what I was doing, which is um, start to transform it and in particular holding the control key. I will be able here to distort it and only transform it. So I'm going to go ahead and replace these little anchor points from our, they're not anchor points, but it's not, it's not vector what I'm talking about. <laughs> these uh, little points here from our selection back into the original spot. Roughly there, probably afterwards we'll have to fix it. It looks like it's not, it's not fully there. I'm just going to have to um, bring your pasty down a little bit to see what is not working and then I can just adjust it accordingly. Now I'm moving fast because I want to make sure that I show you this workflow. Feel free to take more time. So they're like, Claudia, what are you doing? So you create another window again. Thank you very much. Nothing is happening. Well, remember, (laughs) this is a smart object. So Mm. besides uh, being able to preserve the pixels, it's also like a folder. So you can stack more layers inside the smart object layer besties if you love photoshop smart object is going to be your best friend Mm -hmm. so now we're going to call this one shop window 
and then I'm going to double click on it. And this is how you access the folder. That's how you access the content, which is another uh, Photoshop file, which is a, a PSB um, file here. And here we can bring any other image. As I said before, we're going to talk a little bit about stock. I know time it goes way too fast. There's so much I want to show you still. <laughs> but you can access Adobe Stock within Photoshop and within all the other amazing Creative Cloud apps simply by using the libraries. Click on a down pointing arrow, uh, search in Adobe Stock, and here you'll be able to uh, type whatever you want. My search was a cafe display window or something like that. Let me see, make sure the stock is selected. Um, I'm just going to show you real quick, you know, display window, cafe window, cafe interior. You can find as many as you want. When you find one that you like, you can go ahead and also find similar and you can browse more and more the library and then simply click on the plus icon in order to add it to your library. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to spare all this time because as you can see, I tried many because mm -hmm. I was working at the time with the interior designer. So they had a specific look and feel. And we ended up for these uh, wooden and gray. And all I have to do is to click and drag to place it there. Now, this window is different from the original one that I was working with. Mm -hmm. So bear with me. I don't know how this is going to look like. But I'm going to go ahead and bring it in from the libraries. Press Command S to save. And once we bring back in our image, boom, is there. Nice. And it's in perspective, which is just amazing. It's in perspective. At the moment, it's looking like a bit um like dull because we still had the opacity down mm -hmm. it will need adjustment uh you know probably what i will do i will like distort this image you can mm -hmm. spend as much time as you want to make sure they like you get the right um the right design for it it looks mm -hmm. like this corner is like flying so again uh, make sure that you do take in consideration. Although, as I said, this is not the final product. Mm -hmm. This is just simply something to give the shop owner the idea of what's coming in his shop. I think that's a little bit more realistic. Already in perspective, already there. By the way, you can create mock-up like that. You can go ahead and swap it with anything else. You literally, you know, if we find something else here that you rather use, you know, you're more than welcome to just simply go ahead and swap it and if it is you have another nice. another um image there and you can go back and do that in a non-destructive way Love now it. real quick something else is a window but there is something like it really looks like it's been photoshopped and it's been whacked there and it doesn't look right what is it missing what is it missing Val? maybe a little bit of depth perhaps a little bit more perspective whatever i feel like there's a lot of things that you can add based missing on the window what you're going yeah yes <laughs> and the actual window <laughs> <laughs> we're missing the window so how do we add the window effect inside photoshop in this case i would probably like you know take a screenshot if i had here more area of these mm -hmm. like little um little tree that i have there but i've simply browsed photoshop sorry adobe stock for some sort of like outdoorsy feelings over here which i'm just gonna overlay here mm -hmm. and i'm just making maybe taking advantage of this green reflection mm -hmm. and then there is a really quick way of doing it which is to place the image on top and then use the screen blend mode yeah so we already have this sort of like effect although this doesn't fully like you see a lot of the outdoor and mm -hmm. not enough of the indoor right now and that's when we use levels and I really wanted to show you this because we talked about all this fun and easy Gen AI, click a button and it's done. But Photoshop has got much more depth into mm -hmm. it. And I wanted to touch on levels because usually when there are histograms and when there are graphs, people are like, OK, bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I think that that's like really where you find the power. And once you get to understand how it works, hopefully I'll do an OK job breaking it down for you. Levels are super powerful in terms of creating contrast. Mm -hmm. They help you to correct the what is called tonal range mm -hmm. of an image. All you have to think about is that this is basically that black point of an image. So the black pixels are here in this little slider on the left. And then all the white pixels are here on the right. And here in the middle, we have like a gamma of mid-tones. And underneath, so this is the input. This is inside the image. And we can already say that the image is a bit overexposed because we have a lot of data towards the white side. Mm -hmm. And at the bottom here, we have the output. So the output is the actual value of white and black. So in this case, like all these white are like 
full full pretty like bright white and all the blacks are true black so if i want to make the bright a little bit darker all i have to do is to change the output and look what happens here all the nice. darker pixels change now don't forget that we do have the um the screen blending mode which already allow us to make the dark pixels transparent and it will only show the lighter pixels so it automatically lightens the image and that's why i will right away start to correct that by bringing all these you know lighter pixels down mm -hmm. but then i will also crunch up the black so i'm just going to bring all of these um values here from the black and just sort of like give that transparency because the more black i inject with the picture in the picture mm -hmm. because we're using the screen blending mode basically going to have them to disappear so we can see more already of the cafe behind and all we have to do is to just simply um use inside this image just turn the opacity down a little bit more yeah and another thing we perhaps want to um just use a uh, clip this uh, adjustment layer only to the window you're going to see the change happening now right away because whenever you use an adjustment layer it just applies to all the layers below mm -hmm. so if you only wanted to work on this specific see look we changed the original image as well mm -hmm. so if you just want to interact with the layer below you can just simply click here on the clipping mask and you will see here exactly what we've done so we have let me go ahead and hide this layer to show you the difference so just by screening we just make the image really really bright and uh, using the levels, what we've done is we reduce the white and we have crunched up the black. So we have more image, more uh, part and more pixels of the image, which are the darker pixels that will be mm. hidden because we are using the screen plan mode. Did it make half a sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think this is really great. Um, and I, it's honestly, I have, I think there's a lot of different methods that you can use to create this sort of atmospheric um, depth to um, a project like this. And you really opened my eyes to a new technique that I could be employing for um, any future projects where this I need to do this because I never thought about doing it quite like this. But I think it's actually a little it's better than what I actually do. So I'm excited. Well, that's the beauty of Adobe Live. You know, that's mm -hmm. the beauty of these apps. And that's the beauty of Adobe Live. The apps allow you to do like so many workflow. I think I would like I posted a reel and I had someone like, like oh, why do you use this method? This method is ancient. You can do so and so and so. And I'm like, yes. This is a beautiful method that I'm going to give a shout out to your beautiful method. But also mm -hmm. there is another method and mm -hmm. maybe I'm more comfortable with this one and you're comfortable with the other one. Or maybe we can use them both depending on the project. Yeah. This is the beauty of the apps. There are so many different ways. Like, honestly, using the screen on its own would have done it. Maybe mm -hmm. adding what I've done now, I've done a little bit of blur just mm -hmm. to have that depth of field because it didn't look realistic because it was mm -hmm. so... It was literally as, you know, needed as it looked like the tree was inside. Mm -hmm. So I think like giving a little bit of blur um, just made it a little bit more realistic. And again, we're stuck in layer and adjustment layers and effects and all of that with smart filters. But we are all inside a smart object. So if we mm -hmm. go back, all these changes have actually been applied inside our window, which I think is super cool. I agree. Do we I have time 100%. for like one more change? Like one more uh, thing? Absolutely. So we have uh, just over 10 minutes left. Yeah, um, so I think that that's enough time for cloudy magic, you know, yes, to be yes, work yes. for sure. Also, let us know if you have any last minute questions or comments in the chat. Now would be the time um, to get them in uh, because of our the time that we have left. Um, we do have Adobe Firefly Weekly coming up after this. So there is still more Firefly magic um throughout the day but yes i think that this would be a great time um to do a little magic i think i might know what you're about to do and i'm super excited for it so let's go for it oh <laughs> uh, i think i'm gonna I'm, i think i'm gonna upset you i'm, uh, I'm not gonna do you think you're gonna change background no oh, no i'm gonna change color yes Yes. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> everybody I was usually like it. selects and changes like the background. I was like, oh, 
oh, I don't want to upset you there. No, so no, I'm, you're fine. <laughs> what I'm using here is like a, the another amazing, fantastic tool, which has been introduced just a couple maxes ago, mm -hmm. uh, which is the object selection tool. As you can see, just simply by hovering on the image, you have already a preview of the selection, then click on it. And then you can further edit it using the control or command and alt or option key. With the alt and option, you'll be able, as you can see, the selector as comes up with a little minus and allow us to like take pixels away from the selection. While if you add, uh, you know, if you wish to add more pixels, you can at any time use the um, shift key in order to add the pixels back. Mm -hmm. So all I wanted was the building. Again, you can also swap to other selection tool. In this case, press Alt and I can just get rid of these bits of the of the road that is there. Maybe I've done a little bit too much, but hey, we can bring it back. No problem. So once you create the selection, in this case, of the building, I'm just going to go ahead. And again, there are several methods uh, of doing this. And I love that I say that I just do a quick job when I'm on a live, but then I go into details because. I'm oh, obsessed. I do the same thing. It's like just one more thing. And then 10 minutes later, you're like, I mean, just one more thing now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So again, we're going to jump back into the adjustment layers. And here we can go ahead and use the UN saturation. So as you can see, the UN saturation already gives me that selection that I had before. So it's applied to um, the UN saturation. And here we have this properties panel with this little picker, we'll be able to select the color. Now, mm -hmm. this color have a massive different shade. So we have lighter gray and darker gray. So usually you will be able just simply to change. Oh, it's actually doing quite a decent job. Um, yeah. changing the U because another thing that this designer, this interior designer wanted to show them was like, hey, it doesn't have to be black. We mm -hmm. can actually match the brand. So this is a way you can just simply change the hue by selecting the value. And then you can also change the saturation. Now here, the color that I wanted was like a little bit of a cyan color. Mm -hmm. And it's looking with a lot of artifacts. Look at that. It's looking mm -hmm. like a bit weird. And otherwise it just looks a bit dull. In that case, if you're not able to find the color that you want. What I tend and suggest you to do is to find the lightest version of it, take the saturation all down, take the lightness all up in order to brighten that up. Mm -hmm. And then you always have the option to bring in another solid color uh, yeah. over here and then choose the color that you want for your um, for your building. And then you can use now the blend mode uh, in order to just really apply Ooh, the color, it. whatever whatever works best. Mm -hmm. um, usually color is the one that matches the luminosity as well. Perhaps you can also turn the opacity down a little bit more. And of course, you can double click on the color to make sure that it's the right color. And you can do, again, this um, simply changing and working with your interior designer. And just because we love having fun here, I can just whack in one more thing. Yeah. Uh, let's see if it works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring all of these together and create a group. And I'm just going to go ahead and convert into a smart object. And I'm going to copy and rasterize it. I always do that. I always do like mm -hmm. ever rasterized copy of it. Oops. This is you about how coming. I work as well. Like I'll, I'll group things and I'll make it a smart object. I like to do the smart objects like you do here for two reasons. Number one, it's non-destructive and it's really easy to work into the workflow. But also it's I don't have to look at how many layers are in the list when it's just a smart object. It just cleans it up right? for my eyes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like it just makes everything so much neat. Mm -hmm. So we can change the sky, which I think is like super yes. awesome. So we can really go ahead and use all these amazing and of course here don't just you know uh, adjust the sky use the br uh, brightness make sure that you match the brightness of the image mm -hmm. and the fade edge just make sure that you have some fun with these uh, sliders so you can uh, match the actual lighting but you know this is just to show you it's endless mm -hmm. it's absolutely endless the depth in which you can uh, go back to your image so as again here i'm going to create another smart object so i get all this sort of like final product and then I'm just going to, let's go ahead and close these. I'm going to go back into the original image. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and open up uh, these smart objects. Let's go ahead and convert into layers. Here it is back into layers. So you can always bring it back. Because what I wanted to do is to show you the before and after in just one click. So yeah. see if we bring the initial image out of this group. See if I can do it. I love that I can do all the complex stuff. And then when it's time to drag a layer I'm like panicking well yeah 
<laughs> I know that feel. <laughs> so here it is. We have the final image and the original one. Amazing. And this is what we wanted and we created it. We didn't have to spend hours, hours trying to find the perfect image. We just have to have a conversation, realize what we want, mm -hmm. type it, click generate, and we make it happen and transform it into pixels just like that. Mm -hmm. So we do have um, maybe five, six minutes um, left. You work very fast. So you were like, oh, we do I have enough time? In. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we do have time to bring the logo in and do some Perfect. extra stuff here, which is great. Um, and I love this, like this, this, you know, finishing touch, personal touch moment um, as well here, adding all of these nice design elements um, to the scene because it just makes it that much more recognizable and understandable to anyone who looks. Um, and you raised a great, a great um, point earlier about like, you know, doing this so that other people who need the support and help of a designer really to visualize the future um, of their brand, of the possibilities, this brings it that much further, you know, so from that image to this amazing scene to something that they can look at and think that's mine, you know. And that was a reality, like this is a real, real, pro like this happened for mm -hmm. real last week, like literally when I, when I was having a conversation if to come here on Adobe Live and doing the stream, I was like, do you want me to use Adobe Firefly? I'm using it right now. And there is nothing best, I think, than showing a real workflow because don't get me wrong, I love to create cool, cool images, but mm -hmm. you know, like there is nothing bad and act best than actually like show how to use it. Mm -hmm. Even like bring it further. Let's see if we can actually bring that. So just for those of you who do not know uh, what I've been doing here, I just simply copy and pasted the, the illustrator file inside photoshop again like before uh, control t to transform it and all the control key in order to uh, distort it so mm -hmm. i made it match the perspective real quick and then i set the blend mode here the blending mode Ooh, it looks everything is frozen the blending mode into multiply and then there was something that it was mismatching so the logo was like showing up on top of the door so all i've done is to simply create a selection i'm just going to do that real quick so you see what's going to happen here so all i've done is to create a selection where the logo is not supposed to show just like so and then i just went and created a, a mask there so oops an inverted mask i should say let's see if it's happened here it's not happening but let me go ahead and click on the mask and then Oops, where is our properties panel? It flew away. If you do not find your panels like myself, you can always head to the window menu. And here we can invert the mask. And nice. that, that happens just like so. There is a shortcut, I believe it's Alt. I had a, a stage panic, so I couldn't. Do you know that I, I just, I did not know that you could do that. You just totally blew my mind just now. I did not know. I don't know why I didn't know, but I did not know there was a button where I could just invert the mask I made and yes. my life has changed forever, Claudia. And you can actually like, <laughs> if I if I remember, because I do it, if I do it without talking, I do it right. If I talk, mm -hmm. I do it wrong. Mm -hmm. I believe it's option or alt. Yeah, no, it's not that one. Somehow I have to, if, if I am like showing somebody, I have to like just activate muscle memory and do the hotkey real quick and then do it again and look at what I did so I can tell you where it's at. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually right. With the with the alt key, you do the inverted mask, but in this case, I just needed a normal mask. So I've done the inverted and then brought it <laughs> together. Amazing. <laughs> but it works. So if you need the inverted one right away, just click on the mask and press alt and it will invert it right away. Nice. Otherwise, select the mask. Make sure that the thumbnail here is on the mask and therefore the properties panel will have here the little invert, which allow you to quickly swap the black and white value inside the mask and as we heard perhaps a bazillion times everything that is black will be hidden and everything mm -hmm. that is white will be revealed yeah. there's actually Carol... something else that i can like do if we have the time still mm -hmm. yeah we have um we have maybe three minutes so oh, we're, perfect, we're coming perfect. to the end here carol pearl though just adding to what you just said uh was saying you could also click on the mask and do control i for for invert which is typically what i what i would do if i needed to swap it but i didn't realize there was a thing for it which Yay. kind of goes to show what you said earlier claudia that there are so many different ways to do things we learn um, uh, we all learn together so yeah. what i've done here is created another smart object ouch nearly got my ears off 
good. Um, and again, I create a smart object because I'm about to like give my final touches to the image, which usually comes into the form of a quick camera roll. Again, we used a bazillions of layers and stuck them up. There are different in terms of lights. There are different elements that don't really necessarily look to be the same. Look at that. I even made some steps blue. But, mm -hmm. you know, how do we make sure that this image gets some, you know, becomes a little bit more coherent, a little bit more cohesive? There are stuff that I would have edited in the past. Like like here, perhaps is that would have been a final image. This is definitely needing a little bit of like shade, perhaps. Although it looks yeah. like the sun is still coming like this way. Mm -hmm. So maybe the shade only hits this side. So maybe the plant is in the front enough not to be in the shade. But we can also use camera row as an effect, as a filter by making sure that we create a vector mask to protect. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm putting that magic folder, everything that we have created so far. And then with the layer selected, we can go to filter, camera roll filter and do just a global adjustment here in terms of like give it a little bit of contrast play with the highlights so maybe we can open nice. up the uh, the white so the overall brightness of the white pixels comes up we can have a little bit of a play with the shadow maybe opening up the shadow revealing some details here of yeah, the highlights can, as well we can do a maybe lot can... of really great editing in there i don't i hate to cut you off though but we are we do have to take off because i don't want you to get cut off perfect <laughs> but done. absolutely done. great advice thank you so much claudia you've done so much excellent work for us here today i learned so much and i know everyone in the chat um learned a lot definitely give claudia a follow check out um her behance um and all of that good stuff which the info is in the description for you folks um claudia it has been an absolute pleasure thank you so much fun. for joining us <laughs> thank you so much and thank you so much everybody we'll see you soon see you soon everybody bye